what happens when you have more than two slits? What type of interference pattern are we going to get? Well, this actually jumps a little bit ahead to a topic that we cover in the next chapter with diffraction gratings. Um, but we're going to take a look at how we, when we go from two to three to multiple slits, how that influences the pattern that we see. So we take a look and see, okay, we've got our coherent source. We send it through um, a single slit to uh, create this coherence. And now we send it through three. What's going to happen here? Well, now we're still going to get approximately the same position um, for the uh, bright peaks. Here's your m equals zero, m equals uh, negative one, m equals negative two. However, what we tend to see is the peaks get sharper the more slits that we have here. And again, that's because we're not just taking the wavefronts from, from two sources. We now have the wavefronts from three sources. And the tolerance be between how the three waves line up becomes less and less. The peak becomes sharper and sharper. So again, we can imagine a three slit interference pattern would be due to the difference in the, the wave, um, the way the waves travel. Here is the first slit, the second slit, the third slit. So our um, condition for co uh, coherent um, constructive interference would have D sine theta equaling lambda and 2D sine theta equaling 2 lambda. So um, again, multiple slits just makes our peaks sharper. So you can see here's our two slit pattern right here. This is basically our sine squared function because the electric field goes uh, well, more like a cosine. It's, it's a little more complicated than that, but uh, effectively the electric field goes by cosine. So this sort of cosine squared that we're seeing. And that's what we see with this first one right here. But as you see here with three slits, the width of the peak compared to the height of the peak, this is not done to scale, um, is becoming uh, taller and taller. You know, here's a spread that we have here. Now we have a narrower peak. And we also get some of these uh, interference peaks right here uh, between the two. But two slits, three slits, four slits, and we start seeing that the central peak gets uh, ever sharper as we add more and more slits to this whole thing. There's actually an equation for the uh, intensity. We saw this for two slits um, where the intensity was equal to um, some central intensity times sine squared n gamma over gamma squared, where n is the number of slits. So for two slits, it was two. And that effectively uh, gave us that cosine squared type uh, pattern, even though it shows here sine squared over um, uh, gamma squared. Uh, in reality, we actually have to also include the diffraction effects, and that's what this term does right here. But um, if we analyze this function and we make n larger and larger, the uh, constructive interference peaks get narrower and narrower. So we'll ignore the mathematics here and again, see for three peaks, we get um, a little more, uh, a little sharper uh, intensity pattern here. Um, for four peaks, it's uh, even sharper, okay? And then if we go to 20 peaks, um, these peaks have very little sharpness to them. And there are a lot of these interference fringes that are around it. So this is for 20 uh, slits right here. And what happens is the constructive interference only occurs for a very, very narrow uh, range of angles. And if we took this to a very large N, um, it would effectively be what we call a diffraction grating. This is a diffraction grating like this and right here. And what we have here this is actually, um, I believe, a reflective um, grating. So uh, 
it operates a little bit differently, but you can see the interference colors there. And um, essentially what happens, actually I should say this is a refractive index thing. They, they physically create a grating within there, which uh, has the same effect. But um, you can see here lines per millimeter. That's really the distance between each of the, uh, the effectively what would act as a slit. And um, we usually uh, use diffraction grating to break up many colors of light into their individual uh, wavelengths. Uh, remember, the angle is dependent on the wavelength. So if we're looking at first order and the distance between the openings, uh, the number of lines per millimeter is fixed, the only thing that's going to be different is with this wavelength right here. So diffraction grading is very, very important for spectroscopy. We used to use prisms and we used to use dispersion to spread out the different wavelengths of light. But um, this is a much more effective way um, and a way of, of creating a, a very high resolution um, you know, spectrograph of whatever light that we're looking at. So again, we can imagine that, let's say we put four different wavelengths of light into one of these diffraction graders. What we see here is the result would be that each of the peaks would be wavelength dependent. So if I knew um, what the distance between the slits was, if I knew what order I was looking at, normally we just operate in the first order. Okay, we spread out the pattern enough in the first order. Um, we could then find out um, the wavelength of, of light that passes through here. So what I've created is a simulation of, uh, you know, red light at 650, uh, yellow light at around 600, sort of yellowish orange light, green light at around 520, and then um, blue-violet light around 480 nanometers. Now, the reason why we use the first order is as we get to higher and higher orders, we start seeing uh, problems where some wavelengths, here's uh, the red from the third order beginning to overlap with the uh, blue-violet from the fourth order. And uh, again, we can get um, you know, spread the angle out as much as we want by making you know, smaller and smaller distance between the slits and uh, effectively just look at the first order and uh, measure the wavelength um, by, by measuring the angle.